What's going on, geeks? Darren here, or AKA, I don't know, don't have a call sign, so it's D Ran, as you will, with the uh, the podcast. I'm coming at you guys with a little technique. I posted some pictures up on the Model Geeks podcast Facebook page, several pictures. I don't know if you've been following along with my Ming uh, Super Hornet build. It's been a lot of fun. I kind of challenged myself to a a 30-day build, and I started it on the first. And uh, I mean, here's a couple of pictures in case you haven't seen it. For you YouTubers out there that that follow the channel and don't necessarily follow the Facebook page, um, this has been a fun uh, at this point 23-day build for me, 24 days. Uh, I will have it done by the end of the month. So challenge myself, and uh, I've I feel like I'm going to meet that challenge with no problem. But Back to what I was saying, I put uh, some pictures up a gallery that I've been putting on Instagram uh, as well as the Model Geeks podcast Facebook page. And I got several questions about what colors of silver or metallics I use for the exhaust. Uh, and here's a picture of that exhaust. And the answer was I didn't use any. Uh, that was a complete and total dry brush technique that uh, my co-host, uh, Scott uh, Samo, a.k.a. Nemo, uh, had taught me. Now, I am a big fan of dry brushing. I use uh, dry brushing in a lot of different instances, uh, from the cockpit to enhanced details. Uh, here's a picture of uh, a tank I was working on uh, in the floorboard, which is all diamond plate. Was that's All that detail is brought out with nothing but dry brushing. So it's a technique that I really, really, really like. And uh, this is a metallic technique using dry brush that works really, really, really well. Um, the thing is, though, is you have to use the right paint combinations. And in this case, the paint combination is Tamiya XF1 Flat Black and the Model Masters uh, Chrome Silver. Don't know what it is about the combination. Uh, I'm not a chemist by any mean. I couldn't tell you about the micro properties of why this paint reacts with that one this way. All I know is that this works and it works extremely well. So I have tried it in the past with other paints and I, I'm, I'm here to tell you, you can use stuff like uh, here's the picture of uh, a Hornet that I started and kind of shelved uh, sitting next to the Super Hornet and the one on the right, which is the Kinetic Legacy Hornet, I used Mr. Surfer 1500 on and then dry brushed it with uh, the Model Masters Chrome. And then the one on the left, of course, is a Super Hornet. And you can see a distinct difference. And I, I don't know why, but like I said, the XF1 in the, the Model Masters just works. Now, again, you can get a metallic finish and, uh, you know, this works using the Mr. Surfacer and, you know, the, uh, the Model Masters Chrome, it works. You're going to get a metallic uh, uh, finish, but it just doesn't look right. Just not, it doesn't look, it doesn't look smooth. It doesn't look natural. So if you uh, give me just a second, I'm going to go ahead and flip things over to the bench here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to demonstrate it for you. So before I do that, I am going to ask you to please uh, go ahead. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, we are starting to move things over. We're going to do a lot of our Model Geeks podcast tips and techniques here on the Grumpy Old Scale Model YouTube channel. And you'll start slowly start to see things kind of migrate over. So as you can see in the intro, Model Geeks podcast, uh, aka Grunt, uh, presented by Grumpy Productions. So uh, there's going to be some changes as we move forward. Uh, so if you're not subscribed, if you're coming here from Facebook, from the Model Geeks podcast, please make sure you subscribe. Uh, click the notification bell so you're notified when we up, up the, upload stuff. And uh, keep an eye out. We're going to do uh, some, you know, we'll do some live uh, question and answer stuff here in the near future. And uh, upload some of the podcast here to the YouTube channel. And uh, that way you're notified whenever we do do new content here other than on Facebook. So uh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and move over to the bench and we will get into the tip slash technique. So, 
Okay, so here we go. Like I said in the opening, you only need a couple of things for this, uh, this technique to work. And as I said in the opening, uh, the, the picture, as a matter of fact, here it is again, uh, the one on the, on the right. I actually tried this technique with my Mr. Surfer 1500 Black, and then I went back and utilized the Model Master Chrome. And as you can see, it just there's just something there. It just didn't. It just doesn't look right. Does it look metallic? Yep. But it just it just doesn't have that smooth, you know, sheen or look. So what I've done is I've taken uh, this exhaust can, it's a spare I had, I went ahead and shot it just 15, 20 minutes ago with my Tamiya Black XF1 flat black. And we're going to end up going ahead and dry brushing it with the silver. Uh, now, someone had also asked me uh, in the comments there about dry brushes. and I've got several different types. Now I found these, this one here at the makeup store. I, I like to use a real soft brush for dry brushing. Uh, the, the thing is, is these will absorb a lot of paint. Uh, they normally do. Uh, and they come in multiple sizes. So they, they work fairly well. They're, they're relatively inexpensive. But for a few dollars more at, uh, and I got these at the gaming store, now, this was a set of dry brushing uh, brushes that are used. These are Army Painter, uh, Army Painter Masterclass Moderate Dry Brush. This is a moderate, this is uh, the Mighty, and this one here is the Miniature. Uh, and depending on what size or what area I'm going to dry brush will depend on which one I'm going to use. But uh, these seem to work really, really well. Now, if I'm doing a cockpit or something like that, I'm going to get a smaller brush, but on large areas, uh, I tend to like to use these. I am a dry brush fan, so I'm always looking for good brushes to dry brush with, and I found these to be uh, to work really, really well for me. So I'm going to go ahead and use the, uh, the moderate or the medium one for this. Uh, so anyway, I just give it a good shake. You know, as I said before, uh, the key here is to get that dry brush as dry as possible, right? And I'm not going to use a butt ton of paint. I'm really just going to dab what's out of the lid here. I'm going to get myself a different paper towel to put over here to wipe my dry brush off with. So I'm just going to dip it in, get it, some paint on there. And as you can see, I mean, I'm taking a bunch off. And, I mean, I'm going to keep going because I want as little on there as possible. Uh, let me flip that over. And you're going to see uh, there's more and more and more coming off. Look, it's just barely got anything on there now. Let me flip it one more time. And you'll see how there, there's some but man it's very little so the last thing you want is you want dry you you want brush strokes on this it's not that's not gonna look good so uh, you can see I can put it on my hand I get nothing so then I take this and I'm just gonna start slowly I'm just gonna do part of it but God, you can already start to see a shine coming uh, I'm just gonna start dry brushing it and this is why I said before that it it takes a little time because you're using so little paint, but you want to build this up slowly. And I'll, I'm going to show you on the other side of this uh, what happens when you you use too much paint. But and the more you do this, you reload the brush, start again because this is going to dry out really fast because there's so little paint. But the longer you do it, then the, the shinier it's going to get. So as you can see, I'll show you the picture here one more time. The uh, outer ring of the Super Hornet on the left is shinier than the exhaust can itself. And that's just simply because I went a little bit longer on the outer ring before I did the, uh, the can. So uh, 
I just scratch that hit that with my brush but I can fill that back in so you can already see here hopefully you can see that it's starting to get a shine to it and here's the back part which is still black now I'm doing this really fast uh, for demonstration purposes so uh, don't sue me on this it's not gonna look as good as if you took your time but the goal here is to show you the technique, not to uh, do an award-winning type exhaust here, if you will. So, yeah, most of it off there again. I'm going to go ahead because I reloaded the brush, and I'm just going to continue on. And you can start to see now, just after two reloads of that, uh, we're starting to get a really good effect. Uh, those starting to pop in there good you can see that shine this is not hard to do uh, I like doing this uh, I want to you know I thank Scott all the time for showing me this technique uh, it keeps me from shooting metallic paints which I hate doing um, I really haven't found a good silver paint that I can use for exhaust uh, of this nature uh, of course you know you can always come back in here with some some blue uh to me a clear blue and do a little highlighting and kind of heat stain it uh, if you need need be or some you know yellows for burnt so on and so forth but i think you get the gist here now let me show you what happens if you got too much paint we'll come over here to the other side where it's all black i'm gonna go ahead and reload it and now i'm gonna take some off but not nearly as much and i'm gonna start to hit it look what happens see that that's no good you just paint it silver you really need to get as much of that off there as possible that's the key here is dry 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 and then take your time so and uh You'll get a convincing exhaust. It works with uh, the F-16s. It works with uh, these F-18s, the Tomcats. Uh, you name it, man. And then, of course, you can go on a weather and start to add whatever you need to after it's good and dry. So uh, I hope that answers y'all's questions. And, uh, you know, if there's more that you guys want to see, I hope that you'll let us know. Uh, I really uh, enjoy interacting with all y'all. And if... Uh, you see something on the, uh, the Facebook page, something you want us to elaborate a little bit more on, please let us know. Drop us an email at contact at modelgeekspodcast.com or uh, leave us a comment in the comments below. We're going to look at each and every one of them. Um, so, also, if you like this, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button, as I said before. Uh, ring the notification bell. Uh, we plan on putting future stuff up on here that way you're notified whenever we do it uh, not just by facebook but by youtube as well and uh and until next time like we say in the podcast so i'll be good to each other and uh by all means man get out there and build something out for now we'll see you all again soon thanks for watching